Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. This time we are talking about a thing which is hmm, can be quite annoying, yeah? but it's there, we have to deal with it. We are talking about errors. Whenever we measure something, we do make an error. We know this. And since we know this, we do have, we do have to deal with it somehow. All right, okay? So, um, there is the real value, which this quantity, the real quantity, the real value, the thing really has. And then I do my measurement, and then I have a measured value. And the, those two things, there is a difference in between. Yeah? Between the real value I wanted to determine, and the thing I have really determined, yeah, there can be a difference. And this is a measurement error. Okay? There are different types of measurement errors. Yeah? Last time we talked about this here. Yeah? Only look at that. Yeah? So we do have here some voltage source with an internal resistance, which is simply there. And if I want to measure the voltage of the voltage source, I'm using a voltmeter. And because I'm using a voltmeter, I drain here a little bit measurement, measurement uh, current. And the measurement current is now changing my voltage I've measured. If I would not have applied my measurement here, yeah, the voltage would be different, be exactly by the voltage which is here lost at this internal resistance. Such things which are inside the measurement system, which cannot be avoided, they are simply there. Yeah? We cause them with our measurement. We cause them with the system. These measurements, these errors, they are called systematic errors. Okay? That's one possible error type, systematic errors. So systematic errors lie within the system, yeah? caused by the measurement itself. And they cannot be avoided. This is the thing, yeah? Cannot be avoided. However, the good thing is, if you think about this, this is always smaller than this. Yeah? And if I know how much the internal resistor is, and if I know how much the voltage drain or the, the, the measurement voltage is, then I can compensate this. Okay? So these systematic errors, they do have a value, yeah? a fixed value. Yeah? Do have a value. And a sign. Okay? So they are plus or minus. Yeah? So I can compensate. Compensation is possible with a correcting value. This correcting value has the same value, but opposite sign. And then I can completely completely compensate such systematic errors. So systematic errors, I may, they are there, I can deal with them, I can compensate them, and then I can say, oh, past, systematic errors, check. However, there's another category. There's another category of errors, uh, you know, if the same person at the same object performs the same measurement, several times, we will get several results. Yeah? Maybe not too different, but they will be different. So, this has not systematic errors. They are simply different results by random. These are random errors. This is another type of error, random error. They are caused randomly by whatever reason, by something, okay? Caused randomly by something. Or 
Of course they have a cause. Yeah? They have a cause. But this cause cannot be determined. You cannot tell this and that is the cause. This is just bad luck. Yeah? This is sometimes it's this way, sometimes it's this way, sometimes you know, sometimes there's a little bit friction, sometimes there's a dust particle somewhere, sometimes not. Caused randomly by something. They do not have a fixed value, they do not have a sign. Yeah? Do not have a value and a sign. Fixed value and fixed sign, of course. Yeah? They're just randomly distributed around real value. So even if I have compensated every systematic errors perfectly and I'm completely satisfied with my, with my systematic errors, I will do make random errors and they are distributed around the, the real value. I will get sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less and so on. Yeah. And here we already see where this is heading to because simply I cannot measure once and say that's it. I just have to measure several times and then make a mean when you're something like this. So we have to apply uh, to, to resolve or minimize the random error. We have to apply some, some statistic methods. Okay. Use of statistic to minimize. this error. So I have to use some statistic methods to minimize this error. I will never be able to bring it to zero. Just good enough. Okay. So systematic errors we can deal with, we are done. Random errors we also have to deal with, but we cannot compensate it. So we do have here some, some namings, let's call it. Yeah? We do usually make an absolute error. What is the absolute error? The absolute error, usually shown with f, yeah? this is the measured value, yeah? minus the real value. Okay, So xm is the measured value, The value which my measurement system shows me. Yeah? And xr is the real value. The value which my measurement system should have shown me uh, if, it, if it would show the real value of the quantity I want to measure. All right? And this here is the absolute error. The absolute error has the same, the same unit then the measured value. If I measure length, then the measured then the length is given in meter and the absolute error is also given in meter. Okay? Same unit. <laughs> Hopefully not in meters, but maybe micrometers or whatever. Yeah? But at the, at the same time of unit. Yeah? This is the absolute error. And then we have the relative errors. Because alone from the absolute error, I cannot really tell how severe this is. All right? I just mentioned, uh, hopefully not in meters. Yeah? When I measure, I don't know, 20,000 kilometers, and I have an absolute error of one meter, then, hey, can happen. Yeah? Not that critical. Yeah? If I measure three meters and I have an absolute error of one meter, it's like, <laughs> how is that even possible? So, these relative errors are there to show how severe an absolute error is compared to something. Okay? And there are two types usually used. Yeah? There is the relative error compared to the measured value. Yeah? 
to the measured value. So this is the measured value minus the real value compared to the measured value multiplied by 100 in percent. Okay? So this relative error compared to the measured value is given in percent. How many percent of the measured value is my error? All right? Compared to this, this actually gives the accuracy I am experiencing right now. Okay? And then there is another type of error. This is compared to the full scale value. Yeah? So I have my measurement, the real value, so the absolute error, and here I divide to the full scale value. In German this is also called Messbereichsendwert. German. Uh, full scale value. What is the full scale value? This means if I have a measurement device and the maximum thing I can measure with this measurement device is the full scale value. Uh, if I have a measurement device which can measure 10 bars, up to 10 bars, then the full scale value is 10 bars. All right? So this is the measurement error compared to the full scale value. So this somehow gives the accuracy of the measurement device itself, not of the current measurement I'm doing, but of the measurement device itself, multiplied by 100 in percent. Okay? So these are the two different relative errors. Same unit, different as percent, percent. This is of current measurement and this somehow gives the accuracy of the of the device I'm using. All right. So let's make an example. Uh, like an example, uh, we have voltage measurement. We have a full scale value of our voltmeter, which is 10 volts, let's say. Uh, and we have a measured value of 2.98 volts. And I know the real value is 3.00 volts. So what are those errors? Yeah? The absolute error F is measured value minus real value 2.98 volts minus 3 volts and this is minus 0.02 Volts. Okay, this is the this is the absolute error. Absolute error may 20 millivolts, minus 20 millivolts. Yeah. What is the error compared to the full scale value? Yeah. So this is minus 0 0.02 volts divided by the full scale value, and this is 10 volts, yeah, multiplied by 100 percent and here we have minus 0.2 percent. Yeah. 100 divided by 10 is, is 10 multiplied minus 0.2 percent. Yeah. This is the full compared to the full scale value. Yeah. And if I compare this to the measured value, yeah, I have minus 0.02 volts divided by 2.98 this time. Multiplied with 100 yeah? percent, I have to write small, and then I have to use the calculator here. Yeah? If I type this in, minus 0 0.02 divided by 2.98 multiplied by 100, I'll end up at minus 0 0.667 percent. Okay. So this is how it looks like. Yeah? Absolute error. Relative error, a relative to the measured value, to the, to the maximum allowed value, the full scale value, and relative to the measured value. And here we see, ooh, relative to the measured value, this is much higher than this. Yeah? This somehow is reflecting the accuracy of the, of the device, and this is the accuracy of the, the current measurement. And we see the current measurement accuracy is much lower. Yeah. So next time we are going to deal with this. We are going to compare the accuracy of a used device to the accuracy we can expect when we do measurements. Yeah. This will then be in next video. What we will see there. Yeah. For this time, thank you very much for listening. 
goodbye.